Ladies and gentlemen, there are two statements from Honorable John Waluke that I find very, very interesting, and I would like to read them to you briefly. In his first statement, he says, The other day I told Uhuru that he retired and left me hanging. He told me that he tried his best to solve my case, but he couldn't. I asked him, how was that possible? Yet he was the president. I told him that Ruto was able to help free others. What kind of president was he? Then in his second statement, which is addressed to President William Ruto, he says, You are the father of the nation. Is there another president? Even the birds of the air are under him. I want to plead with you over my case. Help me with it, Mr. President, because I was told to leave you and go to Azimio so that they can remove my case. Now, in this video, I want us to analyze why President Uru Kenyatta could not help John Waluke and his case. Number two, what John Waluke is trying to achieve. And number three, what are President Ruto's options in regards to John Waluke's case. But before we proceed, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. So why couldn't President Uru Kenyatta, who was a sitting president at the time, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, why was he having such a hard time helping John Waluke? In fact, many people believed that the president simply was disinterested in helping Waluke and he was just using him by lying to him that he should dupe President William Ruto and join him in Azimio and then his case will disappear. But that did not materialize. And there is only one reason behind that. And that reason is that President Uhuru Kenyatta isn't a good long-term chess player. He made a lot of moves erratically, especially in his second term. And one of those moves was fighting the judiciary. Yes, the judiciary struck down his victory in 2017. And for the first time in this nation, we had to go for an election twice. Not even during the saga of 2007 did we have to go to the ballot twice. So it was very embarrassing. And the president let his emotions take the better of him. And he started an ongoing war with the judiciary. Names were recommended to the president for him to appoint judges. And he refused to appoint those judges. He then went on to cut the judiciary's budget. So the judiciary was starved. The few judges who are serving, they had a lot of cases on their backs. He was trying to punish them. But he did not know that that move would, in the long run, end up punishing him himself. Because it is that same court that brought down the BBI and a bunch of other things that his administration was trying to achieve. So how then could he go to the judiciary with the case of John Waluke and ask them to strike it down? In fact, the very sentencing of John Waluke, I honestly don't believe it has everything to do with him, but it also touches on the former president, President Uhuru Kenyatta. The judiciary really retaliated by giving such a harsh punishment that we have never seen in this country. We've never heard of a leader receiving more than 50 years behind bars and actually being put in there to begin serving that particular sentence. So that is why President Uru Kenyatta could not help John Waluke. No matter how much power he had, the judiciary was not available to help him. Now, okay, we can say that fine. The judiciary are not with you, Mr. President. They cannot listen to you. Your branch of government, which is the executive, is currently at war with the judiciary. That's fine. We get that. But as a sitting president, you have the privilege of pardon power. Any sitting president in the world has the power to pardon any criminal, even those who have committed heinous crimes, such as arson, murder, rape, anything you want to think of. A sitting president has the power to pardon you, and you will be released immediately and you will go home. So that is all the president had to do. He could have pardoned John Waluke and no matter what the judges say, whether they have given him 40, 50 years, that is all scrapped away. That power is actually available to the president and it is recognized by the constitution. So I also believe that the president refused to help Waluke, not just because of his follow to the judiciary, but because he was afraid that UDA and Kenya Kwanza would weaponize that against him and Azimio, and he was not looking for bad press. In all honesty, that case for John Waluke looks really bad. It looks like the courts have him, and that is why perhaps the president might have held off. Now, so what exactly is John Waluke looking for? What outcome is he trying to achieve? The outcome for him is only one. He wants to be a free man. He wants to be free of the endless probes and the subpoenas and the summons and the court hearings and the endless nights behind bars that he has already served. 
and he is trying to guilt trip President William Ruto into doing what President Uhuru Kenyatta could not do. That is why he was very keen to reveal his conversation with President Uhuru and then to put all his hopes on President William Ruto on national TV in front of other politicians. Now, so having said that, what are the options for President William Ruto moving forward in regards to this particular case for John Waluke? One thing is for sure, while John Waluke was behind bars, Raila Odinga and Azimio really fought for him to be released, and they did so by publicizing the issue more and more in the media. Now, if President William Ruto pardons John Waluke, I suspect that Azimio might turn around and they'll build a narrative that President William Ruto is a president that likes rewarding people who commit crime. Already we have that narrative. The case for Aisha Juma was dropped by the DPP. The cases against Mithika Linturi were dropped. The cases against DP Rigadi Gashagwa were dropped. And then now they'll add to that narrative by saying, now even John Waluke, his case has been dropped. So they will now start trying to link impunity with the president. So if the president steps in to help them, Azimi will do a 180 turn and they will begin bashing him using that as a talking point. Although for the president, there's only one thing which matters to him as of right now, moving into 2027, and that is the numbers that he has. By putting John Waluke behind bars, whether he is corrupt or not, Mulembe Nation will begin to kind of start moving away from him. But by helping him stay out of prison, he might win friends who might help him in the run-up to 2027. So that is what is in it for President William Ruto. And I suspect that he's going to take that avenue, that he will look to get himself an easy second term by keeping the Mulembe Nation together. Already we have seen him acquire the likes of Atuoli. We have seen the likes of uh, the Kakamega governor, Fernandez Baraza, wearing a yellow tie and receiving the president and looking like he's now warming up to him. So for President William Ruto, things are looking good. And I suspect he will be looking to acquire John Waluke as an ally in the run-up to 2027. So the Syriza MP, I think he's playing his politics right. On a personal level, I don't know about on a national level, most people would still want to see him convicted, some might not. But on a personal level, he's doing what's best for him and it might just work. But that's just my opinion, guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys, adios.
kuhakikisha kwamba wabunge wanakuja pamoja. Na naweka jamii yetu hii for the first time your excellency naiweka pamoja. Na tuko tutafanya kazi na wewe tuko nyuma yako. Sasa unakuwa na this time na kameka haita kuwaja kando ni mimi ni chairman ni takuwa niko hapa na inaomba rais wetu utupe kwa izani yako utupe na fasi moja tuje kukuone na hawa wabunge wote ya western kenya ni wetuwe tuko pamoja asandesa na yoksesa